I'm going to go out walking in Niagara Falls because I live by Niagara Falls. And one day I said, you know, if you die first, why don't you help me from the other side? And if I die first, I'll help you from the other side. And she said, yeah, well, that sounds like a great idea. So I moved to Florida, and uh, a couple years later I heard that she died. And uh, about a year later I'm sitting in Starbucks, and all of a sudden all this information on harmonics starts to clearly be downloaded to me. And by this time I have read just about everything out there and on music and healing. And this, was, this was back, you know, like in the early 90s when uh, in the mid-90s and there wasn't a whole bunch of stuff out. Now there's a million stuff out there. I could never read all the material now, but at that time there wasn't much out. And the only thing that I ever came across harmonics was that it just said, you know, there's a paragraph that said harmonics are, you know, and that, that Pythagoras had said everything out there has an address of harmonic. A harmonic is the address in the portal to what in my terms would be the multidimensional universe. It's like if you want to get any place, you can just listen to a harmonic and your consciousness would be propelled to whatever that address is. There's a wake-up process involved so that the brain comes to a point of being able to accept it. Because what happens, we've been so trained that you know you gotta to go any place you have to get in your car or you walk or you ride your horse, that to actually do something like this, the brain can't even conceive it. Okay? But once you wake up, then you can get there and you can travel wherever you want using a harmonic or a light, basically, because that it's the same thing. Light, light transforms into harmonic. <clears throat> so, uh, Pythagoras was one of the first ones to come up to say that, basically. And <clears throat> uh, see, so I, I'm, I'm sitting in Starbucks and all this information starts to be downloaded to me and I'm scribbling it all down and all of a sudden I sort of look back at it and say, geez, you know, this is this is like all brand new stuff. I mean, this isn't on this plane. This is all completely new. It's like no one has ever done this before. And I finally sit back and I say, who's doing this? Because I knew I wasn't because I had never studied it or read it. And all of a sudden I hear Jones voice go off. She was an older Italian grandmother and she goes, well, it's me. And I said, Joan? And she said, yeah, just fulfilling our bargain. Don't you remember? She said, this is how we heal on this side, and I'm channeling it down to you so that you can channel it using it on your side. And so I started working with it for quite a while. And uh, after a while, I started realizing that you know, my, my whole life had been like, in, I had been in training to be able to figure this stuff out. Because if there was any part of my life that hadn't been there, like studying healing, studying metaphysics, studying uh, quantum physics, studying uh, uh, music, if any part of that hadn't been there, this stuff would have been channeled to me and I would have absolutely no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. But as it was, it was like it came to me and I knew exactly what it was and exactly how to use it and, and implement it. And so, I said, you know, Joan, you haven't been dead that long to learn this. I mean, it's taken me my whole life to get to a point to be able to understand this. And it's like, I mean, she played clarinet in high school or in, in elementary school, you know. And you know, I'm a classically trained musician, and I didn't do this stuff. And so I said, you know, who's really doing this? And I look up, I, I was driving at the time, and I look up, and like, Joan is smiling down at me, and then above her is her husband, the doctor. Uh, who's like feeding her information, and then above him was Dr. Stone and Dr. Sutherland, who developed cranial work and polarity therapy, and they were like channeling stuff down to him, to her, and then a whole bunch of people that I didn't recognize going through many, many different dimensions, going all the way back to Pythagoras, who was standing up there smiling at me, <laughs> shaking his head. And it's like he was passing the information down from dimension to dimension to dimension until it got to Joan, who could channel it down to me. Mm -hmm. And that's more or less the story of where, you know, as, as I was going on, I'm going, oh, okay, yeah. now I got it. <laughs> now I understand. And it, it, the thing, I, you know, I gotta say, it's been 
you know, I started this around 2003, started working directly with the harmonics. And, you know, everybody thought I was crazy. All, all my friends, you know, said, oh, no, this will never work. And, uh, you know, so everybody I met. And I went through this major detox while I was listening to this stuff. And so it looked like I was really, really sick. And you know, I tell people what I was doing, and they go, "Oh man, it makes you look like that." I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but to a, you know, a large part of you it just kept saying, "You know, no, this is this is right. This is the right way to go." See, because illness and disease is just an accumulation of stress. That's all it is. It's just a frequency. Stress is a frequency, and then what happens? It's stress gone crazy. And it, it inhibits the frequency that is supporting the tissue. When that gets cut off, then the tissue begins to deteriorate. It's like you know, the virus gets into your computer, then the computer doesn't work. Well, in the same fashion with our bodies, it's when the frequency doesn't get there, the, the uh, liver doesn't work, or the spleen doesn't work, or the blood doesn't work, or the coherency of whatever it is, just doesn't work anymore. And it starts to break down. And it will be many, many years usually, usually, but some, sometimes it happens a lot faster. But that's the process. It's like energetically it gets shut down first, and then the physical form gets shut down. So uh, another way to look at this is, uh, Hans Jenny in his work Cymatics showed that uh, all form is, is created by sound. Everybody's familiar with Cymatics, I assume? No? Okay, what he did is he, he put like a drum head and put a thin, thin film of powder on it, and then he played a musical note into it, mm -hmm. and it formed a mandala. And <clears throat> what he, he further showed that if you change the note, the mandala changes. And what then as he was going along, he showed that the sound is where the mandala isn't. The sound is where the space is. Okay, so if you look at us, we're mainly space. Okay? The digestive system is just the tube, arteries and veins, are just tubes, the whole digestive tract, just the tube, uh, muscles, bones are all just tubes. They got stuff in them, but they're tubes basically. And so what happens, <clears throat> the frequencies, they're subtle frequencies, okay? I mean, most people can't hear them because if, if you could hear them, you know, you'd be walking around with the symphony going off in your head all the time. And so the Creator and its infinite wisdom said, well, <laughs> we're going to make this subtle so that, you know, they, they can't hear it. And <clears throat> so, but nonetheless, you have these going off, and, and your body can respond to that. So what's going on is the frequency holds the space open. Okay, so if we take, let's say, prostate problems in a male, it's like that the prostate gland is right at the second chakra. And we attack each other at the second chakra level. Plus, when the male gets older, you know, he's not sexually pro anymore. And, so there's a lot of fear and doubts coming on from that. That collapses the frequency that's holding that urethra open, that tube open. Everybody kind of got that? Okay, so what happens as that frequency becomes compromised through fear and stress, the frequency caves in, and that's sort of like the dam that's holding the tissue back. Okay? As the frequency caves in, the tissue caves in on it because there's nothing holding it back anymore. There's no space being created there. And see, what my stuff does is it will clear out the stress that's compromising that frequency and reestablishing that frequency and pushing the tissue back. And it reestablishes the uh, coherency of it. And that's true for like the veins and the whole digestive system and, and all of the different organs. Yes? Does this tie to um, your, your work here, introducing us to the concept of physician heal thyself because you're supplying us, you're the conduit to this 
um, let's say, hidden information or hidden history. Uh, um, because we, you know, we, we actually heal ourselves, correctly? Correct? Yes. Yes. See, these, the CDs or the harmonics are a tool that what they do is they will hold your consciousness at the address. So when you listen to the wrist CD, for instance, it's propelling your consciousness to the wrist. Okay? And then uh, once there, you can clear out the stress. See, theoretically, you could heal yourself of, of everything, basically, just by clearing the stress like that. But what happens, we have such a monkey mind, and there's so much fear involved with it, that as soon as you come into the wrist, and there's pain there, we bounce out and decide that we have to go shopping or something. Okay? Whereas the CDs will bring you there, and it will literally hold you there until that's all cleared out. And that's the, the uniqueness of this. Yeah. And when your consciousness is focused on the wrist? When your consciousness focuses on the wrist, it will clear it out itself. So the mind itself should just be clear and quiet? Yes. Yeah, I do have a mantra on a lot of them. And you can say the mantra because each one of these joints has, has a mantra associated with it as well. Can I talk about that? Is it that powerful to have this harmonic um, like played for you by a real instrument, you know, like going to a symphony orchestra? Is that more powerful to get to get that experience of music? I don't believe so because the harmonics are, uh, you know, we have a 12 tone scale. You know, I'm talking 192 different frequencies, basically. And you, you can't generate those frequencies with Western instruments. Also, Western instruments aren't tuned to us. See, um, <clears throat> they retune the instruments, uh, 1700s, 1600s. At one time, music was that. that if you got sick, you would go hear a musical instrument musical concert. And that's where musical instruments like Stradivarius has got their, their value because they produced a lot of harmonics and the people realized that it was the harmonics that healed. Mm -hmm. And so they would go to these symphonies and get healed. Okay? But what happened is uh, whether it was on purpose or by accident, uh, they changed the tuning of the instruments to A440 which is standard concert pitch now for Western instruments. Okay, if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a musician, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But just accept that, that that's what they tune the instruments to, is A440. As I said, each note has an address to it. So A440's address is out here. Okay, A432, which is the frequency that I use, is here. Okay, so it changes the, the concept of the music from being entertaining, which it is out here. Okay, it, it's sort of like you're sitting in your, your living room and a car drives by with its stereo on. That's sort of like one experience. Well, as opposed to having the stereo on right in your own house, you know, that's a really different experience in your body. And that's the difference between having it tuned. When I was, I was playing classical, I was a cla I'm a classical guitarist, and I know when I was, I would be playing this music over and over and over again, and I'd say, geez, this isn't, this isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. You know, it's just, I, the music isn't getting in here for some reason, and I could literally see the music out here, feel the focal point out there, and I, I couldn't understand how to get it from there to hear. This was many, many years ago before I started doing this. But after I, I changed to working with these harmonics and actually started channeling that, I, I realized that that was what the case was. The music is different. That's why music is entertaining now instead of being the healing force that it has the potential to be. Yes? I just want to speak to something because Kirsten works with a didgeridoo. And she plays the didgeridoo over the body. Yeah. And we had a session once, and there were these amazing harmonics. 
Yeah, exactly. And it was a very profound session.